The second video on balancing equations is going to look at equations that are a bit more complicated to balance. This time you're going to see elements that have the same, or compounds that have the same element in more than one place on each side of the equation. So you'll see there's oxygen two places here in the reactants, one place in the products. So this makes this a little more complicated and the rule that goes with this is if an element is more than one place, balance that element last. So uh, you always want to keep that one till the end because any changes you make to the other ones is going to affect possibly that element as well. So just like the other ones, we're going to start with a reactant product table. So uh, for chlorine, I have two. For oxygen, I have seven plus one. And you want to leave yourself some room here because any coefficient I add to this one will only change this oxygen. Any coefficient I add here only changes this one. So I'm only going to multiply this by one or a number by seven. And then for hydrogen, there are two. On the product side, hydrogen is one, chlorine is one, and oxygen is four. So it's important that you line your elements up with the appropriate element. So there won't be an order on the product side. So it really doesn't matter what I start with uh, as long as I don't choose oxygen. So I could start with chlorine, I could start with hydrogen, either one's going to give me the correct answer and a good starting point. So I'm just going to start at the top with chlorine. I'm going to multiply chlorine times 2, and that's going to give me a multiplier of 2. Remember, multipliers always go back to uh, in front of the formula that contains that element. So since chlorine is in the acid, the 2 goes in front of the acid. So it multiplies by our chlorine, but it also affects our hydrogen. So I'm going to multiply that by 2, and it also affects our oxygen. So I'm going to multiply that by 2 to get 8. So that's the important part you need to remember is to uh, update your table as you add coefficients. So the 2 doesn't just change the chlorine, it changes everything. And what you'll notice now, I now have two hydrogens on both sides. So chlorine is what we started with, so we know that checks out. And I have 8 oxygens. And lo and behold, 7 plus 1 equals 8. So I ended up not having to do anything with the oxygen to get that one to balance. So the coefficient of 2 is the only thing I need to balance the chemical equation. Okay, moving on to sample B. And if you are not balancing chemical equations I'm in pencil, please make sure that you are doing that. Uh, it's not that you're doing anything wrong, that you have to uh, do this, but some equations just lend themselves to uh, erasures, and this is one of them. So please copy your notes in pencil. And again, if I'm going too fast, remember you can always pause the video or rewind to rewatch it. Okay. So we have our C6H14. Um, so I'm going to put my elements again, six carbons. 14 hydrogens, 2 oxygens. So nothing major on this side. On my product side, I'm going to go through um, carbon is 1. I have 2 oxygens, so I'm going to put that down here. 2 hydrogens, and then a plus 1. So again, the 2 here is from the carbon dioxide. The 1 is from the oxygen. So it's very important that you have both of those there with a plus. And notice again, I didn't write 3. So again, everything is not in balance, so I'm going to start by balancing carbons. And I could start with hydrogen, doesn't matter, as long as I don't start with oxygen. So 6 is my multiplier, so that goes on the product side, so I need a 6 in front of CO2. And that 6 also is going to change my oxygen. So here's where you're going to see this first example. And this one's nice because it's at the bottom. I can actually just go down. So 2 times 6 is 12. So I've updated the oxygen because of my coefficient of 6. Okay. Again, I'm not going to worry about oxygen. I'm going to go on to my hydrogen. So I have 14 on this side. 2 times 7 is going to give me 14 oxygens. 7 is my multiplier, so I'm going to put that in front of water. So there's my 14, and then I also need to update my oxygen. So I'm going to multiply that oxygen of 1 with 7. And again, I'm going to bring my plus sign down. So 12 plus 7 is going to give me a total of 19. So now I have to balance oxygen. 
So what you'll notice here is there's a two. There's no number that's a whole number that I can take times two to get 19. So this comes to uh, a rule called the odd even rule. So if the amount of an element is odd on one side of the equation and even on the other, the odd number will need to be evened out by multiplying by two. That's the only thing I'm allowed to do with balancing equations is multiplying. So here's where my eraser's coming out. It's not that we did anything wrong, it's just the way this one works out. So seven is where my odd number is. So that's the one that's going to need to be erased. So I'm gonna get rid of this seven, and since that's my odd number, I need to make seven 14. Now, this is ugly, it has a ripple effect through that formula, so I'm gonna change my multiplier to 14, which is gonna make this number 28. Okay. I also need to change this seven, and if you don't wanna change it, you can also sometimes just cross it out if you have enough room. Now, I don't have enough room down here, so I'm gonna multiply but the, the task is to keep up um, as you change things in the formula, you need to also change them in the chart. Okay, so I now have 28 hydrogens, so my hydrogens are no longer balanced, so I'm going to multiply that by two, so that's going to give me a multiplier here. Now, if you're not good with math, so two times 14 being 28 might not uh, be something you can do off the top of your head, but you should know that order doesn't matter. So I can do 14 by, times 2 and 2 times 14 without knowing they're 28 and, and still balance um, with that 2. But again, I put a multiplier in front of a compound, so it affects not just the hydrogen, but it affects the carbon as well. So I've taken care of the 28 on the hydrogen, but I need to adjust my carbon. I now have a multiplier of 2, so again, I'm putting this number in here to give me a total of 12 carbons. So now this doesn't balance. I can't just multiply this by two because I can't put two times six here. You're only allowed one coefficient. So again, my eraser comes out and I'm going to erase all of that and I'm gonna come back here and erase what I had in front of CO2. And again, we didn't do anything wrong to get to this point. This just is why some of these equations uh, work out. So instead of having a multiplier of 6, I now have a multiplier of 12. And if you remember, we doubled this one. This was 7. I doubled that to 14. So it really starts doubling everything. 12 is 6 times 2. This had a multiplier, or it had a coefficient of 1. So times 2 gives me 2. So I'm really just doubling the entire formula. So this gives me 12 carbons. So these match. Okay. But again, I need to be mindful. I've changed carbon. I'm also going to change oxygen. So this is where my six was. So every place I have the six, I need to update. So um, I'm going to have this now be a multiplier of 12. So I have 24 plus 14 which is no longer 19, which is now 38. And what you might notice again is I've doubled everything. So the number that is going to give me my balance for my oxygen is what number can I take times two to get 38? 19, which you might remember was my original odd number that didn't work. So this will be 19 O twos. So this coefficients are 2, 19, 12, and 14. Now I'm going to show you this equation um, one other way. So I'm going to start with my same equation. So the atom inventory is a way to manage your atoms. But what you're going to find is that it sometimes, in, like in that example, gets really cumbersome. And if you make a mistake and don't update everything, you're going to... Um, end up having a mistake. So you may, as you go through this, get to the point where you're ready to just balance mentally. So I'm gonna show you this one as a mental process. So instead of writing the atom inventory, I'm gonna start with my most complicated formula and I'm going to start um, balancing it. So I have six carbons here, one carbon here. So I'm gonna put a six to balance my carbons. I'm not even gonna worry about the oxygen right now because I'm not ready to balance that. I'm going to go back to the hydrogen and I'm going to balance that. At this point, I'm balancing um, the hydrogens. I've only left with oxygens. So if 
if you can't do this mentally, you can kind of do a, a pseudo table. So just maybe keeping track of the oxygens. So I have 12 here and I have seven here. So that's a total of 19. Again, I'm gonna run into that same problem I had. There's no way I could take a number of a whole number times two and I can't have half of an oxygen molecule. So I'm going to need to double everything. So this is my odd number. So I'm gonna double that. So seven times two is 14. 14 times two on this side, again, 28. So two times 14 is 28 here. Okay, because I updated this, I need to double check my carbon again. Six times two is 12. So again, I'm doubling my carbon. So this will be 12. And at this point, I'm doubling my oxygens too. So 12 becomes 24, seven becomes 14. And since I doubled all of that, 19 times two becomes my multiplier. So if you find that easier to do than the atom inventory, you can use that at any time. The only thing I grade on a balanced equation is do you have the correct coefficients? So um, it's up to you what method works best. So uh, there are a few examples for you to try. So go ahead and uh, work on the next practice problems.